Hi, I'm Mike Cavanaugh. This is another edition of Cavanaugh's Corner, the labor talk show here on public access television in southern Maine. Uh, this afternoon, I'm joined by a number of guests, and we're shooting this in uh, Waterville, Maine, at Elm Towers. And we're going to be uh, talking with our guests and meeting them all in just a minute. But first, let me just say that uh, the, the focus of our show has to do with the uh, petitions that were uh, recently submitted uh, to the uh, State House, to the Secretary of State's office, uh, on behalf of the Maine Voters for Clean Elections. And we're going to be talking with a number of volunteers who helped gather signatures for this important petition um, that will uh, move towards taking money out of politics. But first, let's take a look at the action at the State House last week when uh, signatures were delivered on behalf of this petition. Let's take a quick look. organizations from around the state of Maine that have collected the signatures to reform our campaign process and really to get big dollars out of the campaign process. Um, we're going to have some presenters of our proposal this morning and be available for questions. I'd like to introduce from Waterville, Vi Carrion, who will give you some information on, the pro on our proposal. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm so proud and happy to be here today. I was the coordinator of the Waterville uh, uh, for the uh, clean election, and it was my first time, and it was a very good experience. We had only a few days. It was a very busy time for me. We only had a few days to gather people to vote to, the, to work to the polls, and uh, it was difficult to get them during the day, but I gathered all my senior citizens, and they were there, and they were proud to be there. Some of them Some of them had never even voted. They went to register to make sure they were, and they, they're all in twos now, and they'll do it again. And I want to tell you that we gathered over 900 signatures, and had we had more time, that was just a few days, we'd have gotten the thousands. All right. It was a very good experience. And I want to tell you that the people were, that were more eager to sign our, uh, for, uh, our uh, referendum more than anybody else, when they came to ours, they knew that they wanted to sign it. And I was very amazed on how many people even read the whole thing. But they still signed it. They thought it was a good thing. They want clean election. They want less money. They want people to be equal. So it was a very, very good experience, and I'm very proud to be here today. Now I want to, I want to introduce to you a great guy from Litchfield, Maine, Joe D3, that's a director of the Alliance. Joe? All right, Joe. Good morning. My name is Joe Detray, and I'm from Litchfield, Maine. And I'm the executive director of the Maine People's Alliance, an organization co committed to giving Maine citizens a voice in the decision-making making processes that affect their daily lives. I've worked for many years as an advocate for health care reform, and uh, I've seen firsthand the uh, influence that special interest money has on politics and it really makes me sick. That's why on election day, I and 300 members of the Maine People's Alliance joined 1,100 volunteers who spent the day collecting signatures at polling places all over Maine to take big money out of politics. 62,320 Mainers sent a very clear message on election day. Yeah. Let's put an end to unlimited campaign spending, yeah. and let's put an end to special interests buying our elections. Yeah. You got it. We can't afford to wait for the legislature to act. Voters will 
end the stranglehold that wealthy individuals and powerful corporations have over our political process. And we're starting today. Now you might ask yourself, why do the voters need to do it? Because the folks upstairs won't. Here's a list of 40 bills introduced over the past 10 years which failed to take big money out of politics. This, these are those bills. That must be at least three inches thick, 40 bills over a 10 year period, five legislatures which have failed to take big money out of politics. Legislature after legislature has failed to reform itself and this demonstrates that a citizen initiated petition and referendum is the only way to remove the influence of the wealthy and corporations in our democracy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's just ask ourselves and think about the current system of elections and why we, the voters, need to change it. Now suppose a baseball player slides into home plate. And before the umpire makes the call, the player jumps up and says, um, before you make the call, whether I'm safe or out, here's a thousand bucks. Be fair. <laughs> now what would you call that? Bribery. Bribery, right. And that player would be banned from the practice of baseball for the rest of his life. Suppose a defense lawyer in her closing arguments said, your honor and members of the jury, before you decide my client's guilt or innocence, here's a thousand bucks. Have a nice day. <laughs> what would you call it? Right. 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 right, and she'd be the spark. Now suppose a corporate special interest lobbyist approaches the chairperson of a legislative committee, let's say like taxation or banking and insurance, and gives money to that official elected by all of us to decide important issues that affect our daily lives. What would you call that? Lobbying. <laughs> It's bribery, but in our system, we don't call it bribery. We call that a campaign contribution. Ooh. <laughs> Why do we expect less of our democracy? Why do we expect less of our elected public, uh, public officials? It's wrong. This grassroots campaign will restore the principle of one person, one vote. This grassroots campaign will end business as usual. This grassroots campaign will stop the sale of our democracy to the wealthy and corporate special interests. This grassroots campaign will put people before money. And when candidates want to serve us, they'll have, instead of raising, uh, they'll have to raise solutions to our problems instead of raising big money from those who create so many of our problems. Which wait any longer to take big money out of politics. We're starting today, and after this press conference ends, we're taking these petitions and we're marching over to the Secretary of State's office, and I hope you join us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next speaker for you today is Deb Dietrich, and Deb is from Peaks Island. Good morning. My name is Deborah Dietrich, and I've worked on public. I've worked on public health issues in this state for over 15 years. In that time, I've had the privilege of serving on the boards of a number of different organizations: the Maine Nuclear Referendum Committee, the Natural Resources Council of Maine, where I st am still a board member, the Maine Women's Lobby, the Maine Public Health Association, the Maine Family Planning Association, and there are more. And if there's one thing I have learned in my 15 years of advocacy in this state, it's that big money contributions have everything to do with how issues get decided. You don't have to go very far before you hit the wall of special interest contributions. I don't care if the issue is welfare reform, uh, the uh, issue of teen driving, uh, uh, issues like uh, dioxin in rivers, uh, and tobacco sales to minors, which is something that came up uh, only recently in the legislature. Many people think we don't have a problem here in Maine, 
but I say you don't have to look very far for the evidence. Those of us in public health and health care know that the single biggest issue, the single biggest preventable problem, and the single biggest cost to our state is cigarette smoking. And nationally, the tobacco industry spends billions of dollars, billions of dollars, and a lot of money here in Maine marketing their very deadly products. The industry extends its tentacles into Maine in the form of several lawyers, in fact, five who have been paid over the past year alone, based on some statistics we got just yesterday from the Elections Committee, over $150,000 going to five lawyers to do the bidding of the tobacco industry. And that Ooh. money, that money, <laughs> that money doesn't even include the contributions made to individual political candidates or to the political caucus. And I say, he who, who pays, he who uh, pays the piper calls the tune, or she who pays the piper calls the tune. The point is that big money influences how members of the main House and Senate vote on individual issues, and tobacco control or tobacco issues are just one of them. In the case of tobacco and cigarette smoking, it makes bad public policy, and it's very costly public policy for the state. And that's why I, as a, as a citizen activist, have been involved in this effort, and I'm here to help carry these petitions and to join these folks who represent, I might add, every county in the entire state. Yeah, yeah. I'm here to join them as we march these petitions over to the Secretary of State's office and do something about cleaning up the problem of money in politics. Thank you. Maine is not for sale.
I'm Mike Cavanaugh. I'm back at, in Waterville at Elm Towers with volunteers who helped in the uh, Maine Voters for Clean Election petition drive. You just saw some uh, footage of the delivery of those petitions to the Secretary of State's office in Augusta in early January. Uh, let me uh, begin this by uh, uh, welcoming my, my guests, and, and thank you for actually welcoming me to Elm Towers in Waterville. Uh, why don't we just start by uh, introducing ourselves, and uh, Evelyn Frazier, let me start with you. Well, you already named me. I did. Uh, I'm Evelyn Frazier from Winslow. I'm Vi Kirian from Waterville. I'm Dara Reed from Waterville. I'm Stella Huta from Waterville. George Christie, I'm the director of Maine Voters for Clean Elections. I'm from South Portland. I'm Yvette Vigu from Waterville. Well, thank you all very much. I should uh, probably say at the outset that with uh, uh, one notable exception, all of, the, all of my guests are retired members of our union who all worked at uh, Hathaway Shirt here in Waterville, all members of Local 486, who are uh, now part of our uh, active uh, unofficial retiree group. And uh, Vi Kirian, to my right, has really been the person here in Waterville who, uh, who really organized this team to go out to the uh, polling places on Election Day and gather signatures on behalf of this uh, petition. And Vi, I'm going to want 
uh, to ask you about that experience. Uh, but I think probably first we should frame a little bit for our viewers exactly what the petition drive was for. And do you want to talk about that a little bit? And then we'll let uh, George uh, explain a little bit more detail. I was the coordinator of the clean election to get uh, signatures. And it was for clean election for less money in politics. We have laws now, but we don't have any laws for people that millionaires that has money. They can spend to the limit. They can, the, the sky is the limit. So that's what it was for, to gather signatures for that. And it was a good experience, a very good experience. And uh, it was a last minute thing. I didn't have much time to organize, but we got over 900 signatures. And had we had more time to organize, we'd have doubled that and more. The people were very willing to sign the, for clean election. In fact, that's the referendum they were looking forward to sign the most. OK. So there were a number of people signing uh, various petitions, but it was it was the petitions that you guys had that really uh, you know, stole the day at your polling places. Um, George, you're the executive director of the Maine Voters for Clean Elections, uh, and this is a statewide effort. I know a little bit in the uh, speeches that we looked at earlier on the tape, uh, this was explained, but why don't you take a few minutes for our viewers, if you would, to please explain what this is all about. Sure. Um, well, Vi and, um, and our other volunteers here were part of 1,100 volunteers on Election Day who went out in, in every county of the state collected 65,000 signatures on our petition, which is to get big money out of politics. And we had um, people like Vi who were coordinating their communities and finding other people to volunteer. So this was a grassroots effort where local people were finding friends and neighbor and family to come out on election day and volunteer to collect the signatures because we all share the belief that there's too much money in politics that politicians are spending too much to get elected and that there's too many strings attached to that big money that favors are expected in return once someone gets elected and so in order to change that what we've done is collected enough signatures on election day to put a question on the ballot in this November that would do three things one is it would level the playing field for candidates uh, by setting spending limits for what candidates can spend on their campaigns second thing it does is it begins to reduce what any big corporate interest or wealthy individual can give to any candidate for the main legislature or for governor. We're going to cut that by up to 95 percent. Third thing it's going to do is it's going to toughen up our election laws. If I referred to the fact that we have laws, but they're not enforced, this is going to toughen up our election laws. And it's going to also require that when candidates file their campaign reports, they're going to be on a computer disk so that if we want to know um, if the Senate chair of the Labor Committee um, is not voting in our interests, we want to know where that person got their money. We'll be able to go and find out quickly whether they're, who's giving them money, who paid for their campaign. So in a nutshell, that's what, what the proposal does. And the goal that we have here is we want candidates who are going to spend more time with the voters talk, raising solutions to the problems that we face, and less time raising money from the big special interests who are going to expect uh, at a minimum that their phone calls are returned um, and that they are going to get that legislator's ear on the issues that they care about and those issues often affect their bottom line. Well, <clears throat> George, what the, uh, the petition drive was successful, as, as you said, on election day in gathering over 65,000 signatures to put this question on the ballot. Uh, it's, it's my understanding this is a little bit unusual. That is to say, there aren't other states who have done what we're proposing to do in Maine. Is that right? That's right. Maine's going to be the first state in the nation that's going to have comprehensive campaign finance reform. Mm -hmm. um, and we go farther. There, there are a number of ways to get at money in politics. Um, most of the initiatives that are happening in other states have to do with limiting what someone can give to a candidate. A lot of times they're $100 limits, and they've passed in some states. Um, we believe that that's only part of the problem, where the, the size of the contributions, and there's ways to get around contribution limits, and it may actually increase the kind of behavior we don't like, which is people bending the rules uh, to get their money to their candidate. We believe that while you need to limit um, what anyone can give to a candidate, we also believe that you need to level the playing field. We want to set up a new system of, of paying for elections, that if any of us sitting around the table have good ideas, and have the energy to run for the legislature and want to serve, but we aren't rich, or we don't have a bunch of rich friends, or we don't want to mortgage ourselves to a bunch of wealthy special interests, we should be able to run under a system mm -hmm. where we can get money from the Clean Election Fund, limited money to run, to 
run a campaign and spend all of our time talking to voters about what we're going to do to solve the problems that they care about. The way the fund works is that if you're a candidate and you want to run, you have to go out and collect a number of $5 contributions from people in your district. You can take no money out of the district. And once you've collected a certain number of $5 contributions that go in the fund, you agree to take no more special interest money, and you're not going to spend a dime of your own money. So rather than having someone be able to get $1,000 checks from individuals or $5,000 checks from a corporation, the most that you can take is $5 from any one person. And we believe that's going to really level the playing field for us in the legislature. Well, that obviously is a big change as compared to what, what we're used to here in, in Maine. And I want to ask, you know, those of you who sat at the uh, tables up here in the Waterville area on Election Day gathering signatures, what is it that you <clears throat> said to people, and, and what did people say to you? You mentioned that people, you know, Evelyn, I think you'd said that if you had more pages, you could have had more yeah. signatures. Why is it that people sign these petitions? Well, at first, they'd go by and I'd say, oh, you better stop. Then they said, what? Well, explain it to me. Then I'd tell them. I said, do you want, you know, what if you want to run for something and you haven't got the money? Do you want the other guy that can run and can, he said, no, no, we don't. I said, well, you think that's spending too much money? But he said, yes, well, give me the paper. I said, this is the way, really, that uh, most people. So people asked you to sign it when they understood what it was about, huh? Yeah, then they signed it. Yeah, uh-huh. How about uh, anybody else uh, with your experience on Election Day? Well, what? they thought they they were spending too much money on it, yeah, and they wanted to curtail that. Mm -hmm. So there's a gen general sense here in, in Waterville that, uh, oh. probably like other parts of the state, right, that people yeah. are, are spending too much? Too much on yeah. it. Um, how about, do you, you know, are people in the Waterville area running for office who are, who are like us? I mean, you know, we're all out of, uh, you know, a local 486 over here. How many members of our local union have ever run for office that you know about? Boy, huh? I don't know any. Not yeah. 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 You. yeah, is that because our people don't have good ideas? Probably. They well, don't have well, the some of them. They, they can't afford to. That's it. I, a lot of people ask me if it was going to be done nationally, nationally also. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to be have a chance, you know. They wanted to start on equal grounds. And uh, they felt that we were going to be run by uh, the states, the governments, uh, the country was going to actually, if they didn't stop, they'd be run by millionaires. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have people like us that understands our problems and wants to help the people. We wouldn't have any more people at our level that would run us. It would be millionaires that would run the country and the cities and the towns. Yeah. And they felt very strongly about that. And that's why they were willing to sign it and they wanted to make a change. Mm -hmm. And they wanted it really nationally, not just within the state. Right. So well, I told them, if we have it in the state, maybe that would be a start that would encourage other states to do it and eventually mm -hmm. probably have it nationally. Well, that, that is an important point. And George, let me ask you. I mean, you said that Maine is the one place where this is, you know, a, a currently a, an issue where we've taken it this far. Do you know, are, are other people, other states interested in what we're doing here? Is this being oh, talked yeah, about? Oh, yeah. People are all around the country who are <coughs> concerned about this are very excited. I was just uh, listening to the radio driving yesterday, and I was listening to Senator Tom Bradley, uh, or Bill Bradley, talking to on the Diane Reem show. And uh, Senator Bradley's chosen not to run again for the Senate. He wants to devote his time to taking big money out of politics. Um, and when he was asked if anything was going to happen at the national level. He said, no, this is going to have to be a grassroots movement. And uh, there's two places where they're doing this, California and Maine, and I want to get involved. And when I got back to my office, there was a call from his office, so we may see Senator Bradley up here. Um, California is another state that has a referendum drive that they just started. They're collecting signatures. And what they're doing is something a little different than what we're doing. A little history on this. In 1976, the Supreme Court had a ruling on campaign contributions. And what they ruled was that money is free speech in campaigns. And for rich people, money really talks. It was a ruling called Buckley versus Vallejo. And what they ruled was that while you can pass legislation that sets limits on contributions, you cannot limit spending. You cannot limit what an individual gives to their own campaign. You cannot limit overall what any candidate spends on their campaign. So we've got a restriction there with the Supreme Court ruling, which was a bad ruling. Mm -hmm. What California is doing is they're going to challenge that ruling directly, and they're going to they're going to put this on the ballot for campaign spending limits mm -hmm. for all campaigns. But again, they're getting at the issue of big money out of politics. Mm -hmm. But Maine is the state where we are going to set up a new type of paying for elections, a clean election fund that levels the playing field, and that's new in the country, and that's got people real excited. Mm -hmm. 
And the fact that we were able to get 1,100 volunteers to come out and get those signatures and that people really were lining up to sign this, much more so than term limits. There was another term limits petition at the polls. Um, there were a few other issues. This was the issue that really got people excited. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and it's got us excited. I think we have a very good chance. Yeah. Well, I, I, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what the response is when, when we hear from the other side. I mean, we were sitting there at the polls. And when, let me just ask: when you were sitting at your polling place, in were you in Waterville or yes, you're in Waterville? Did Did you have anybody who was uh, trying to talk people out of this? Did you have anybody arguing the other side of it? Not on my table, but mm -hmm. the, uh, there was two or three other tables that, you know, they had other things going, right. signatures, right. Uh, but they came to my table first. In fact, most of them said, we heard all about you. Oh, is that right? So a lot of them I didn't have to explain. They just wanted the pencil to sign. Huh. So people had good. talked about it, uh, even they... had gone around town, yeah. Uh -huh. Very that, that's yeah. that's really great. Yeah. Now, uh, you were in what? Was everybody in the Waterville district, or was somebody in another city? We were all in Waterville. All in Waterville. All in Waterville. Okay. Mm -hmm. In different precincts? Is that? Yeah. yeah. We were yeah. in different. We have seven wards, but uh, uh, there's uh, two wards that are combined, so that made five wards. Mm -hmm. And of course, they have somebody there all during <coughs> eight to eight. Uh -huh. Evenings was no problem because people come out of work. Sure. I could have had all the people I wanted, so it left me with nobody but myself during the day. So that's how I thought of the senior citizen. The retirees, so I asked them, and because uh, we did it so quickly, we had so little time that we couldn't cover all the time, mm -hmm. eight hours, they had to go eat and this and that. So a lot of us would go from one ward to the next. We traveled from one ward to the next yeah. and uh, relieve them for lunch. Yeah. We yeah, relieved them that, for lunch yeah. and we went from one ward to the next with no problem and that helped a lot. You guys have a machine up here. This is <laughs> I, I grew up in Chicago, so I have it some... It was raining hard, but it didn't bother us. This. This is and Mike knows how to do it. So well, yeah. that's, yeah, that's we had good. A good yeah. That's good. And this we had a good leader. Well, that's, that's important. And you guys have the experience of having been organized. I mean, you come out of a union background, and there's a whole lot of people in this town who are, you know, working people, right? I mean, you're not dealing with a whole lot of, this isn't, uh, you know, Cape Elizabeth or, you know, one of the, uh, you know, sort of the, the higher bedroom type communities. Yeah. This is a, you know, working class district up here, Waterville, Winslow area. Uh, George, how did we do with, in terms of petitions signing in uh, different communities around the state? And is this representative? Or? Uh, yeah, this is. Um, you know, in, uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that this is a very diverse coalition of organizations. It's a, there's 11 organizations that have joined Maine voters, and one of them, I'm proud to say, is the AFL-CIO, which joined at convention. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that night we were on the phone, and we had uh, labor activists in um, Rumford and Millinocket and several other mill towns, and they started making phone calls, and they got people at the polls to collect signatures. I was in Skowhegan all day, and um, I had I had one. I think everybody who collected signatures had that one person who came to them and gave you a hard time. And I had a group of people who were signing, and this fellow came up and was whispering in their ear. And I asked him what he was telling people, and he said, "It's a liberal plot." So we got into a debate, and I used an example of one of the problems with money in politics is something called bundling. For people who don't know that, it's there are limits on what you can give, and so quite often what corporations will do is they'll each of the vice presidents will give a thousand dollars to a candidate, but then they'll all sit down at a table and they'll each what they do is they write out the corporation will give five thousand dollars, and then the vice presidents will sit around the table and they'll all write one thousand dollar checks. They'll put them in an envelope in the corporation letterhead envelope, and that envelope will be given to the candidate, and the candidate knows that that came from that company, and it's called bundling. And so I gave an example of bundling, which is chiropractors are very good at bundling. They give lots and lots of $100 checks all on the same day to the same candidate, and the candidate gets the message. He was a chiropractor. <laughs> so, but I managed to get him to sign because uh, he bought the argument that there was too much money in politics. We did need to level the playing field. And um, he signed. Mm -hmm. How do you guys think this is going to work? We're going to as George said, probably have this on the ballot in November. If, if I understand this correctly, the, the legislature could pass it and the governor could sign it, but I don't think that's particu particularly likely uh, going to happen. So if the legislature doesn't pass it and the governor doesn't sign it, then it goes out to the voters on next November. And so instead of sitting at tables getting signatures, uh, your local machine is going to be turning out the vote uh, for this thing. Uh, I'm wondering what you got, how you guys think this is going to play with the voters, particularly because between now and then, we're having the experience of this guy Steve Forbes running around trying to buy the presidency, mm -hmm. you know, with his multi-millions of dollars. You've had the experience in the past of, you know, Ross Perot with his multi-billions of dollars trying to buy the office. Uh, 
and for the the you know the kind of campaigns we're going to have in Maine, we're going to have a race for you know Senator Cohen's seat that's opened up for the congressional seats. There's going to be big dollars poured into Maine, you know, and people are going to see lots of television advertising. You're not going to see a heck of a lot of television advertising on behalf of our issue. I mean, maybe we'll get some, but for the most part, there's going to be lots of ads. Do you think that that's going to make a difference? I think it make it'll make a difference. I think uh, we won't have no problem for people going out to vote and voting for this because they were very, very upset with the last election because they feel a lot of people are there. They won the election because they bought their election mm -hmm. because they had the money to big, for big TV. And they said they don't want to have candidates like a commercial for toys or clothing or anything else. Mm -hmm. They want to have people that are sincere. And uh, they, so they don't want people like that to buy, to, that can buy TV and that all day long and big, big bucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're really not sincere and they're not for what we want. Or they're not out to help us. They're out to just get elected and that's it. And they don't care how they do it. Mm -hmm. And people are upset about that because they feel that our governor watch, bought his election. And we've seen some in California that bought elections, and uh, that's the way they feel. The big money buys elections, and mm -hmm. that's how they get elected. Mm -hmm. Because people see them on TV, they look good, mm -hmm. they say the right things. Mm -hmm. Might not be, they say, they, they say what you want to hear, mm -hmm. but deep down we know that's not what they mean. Yeah. Well, they've got, I mean, they, they hire the best. They hire advertising agencies mm -hmm. to so make So that's why they want to take money out of politics, so other people can uh, go on TV and say mm -hmm. the way they feel too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you think that's generally true? Do you, do you find I, people saying that? Oh, I, I believe that, yes. Yeah? Yes, from what I hear, too. Uh -huh. I agree. Well, I, but I think you'll have a lot of voters turning. Oh, yeah. yeah. Once oh, you yeah. explain it to them, mm -hmm. people do understand. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, well you have a lot of voters turning out because it's a presidential election. Uh, year, also, right? yes. So people will yes. be out there. Yeah. Yes. Well, after the last election, I think senior citizens have learned, because they're getting scared now with what's going on in Washington, and they have learned that they have to go vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of them didn't go vote the last time, and they're in that situation now because they didn't show up at the poll, mm -hmm. and they don't even have to vote the poll. They can do it by, uh, by mail. They can have somebody go to their apartments, mm -hmm. and uh, I think they've learned their lesson because they're really getting scared about what's going on, and we're going to make sure they go vote. Mm -hmm. We're going to get them the ballots. We're going to do it. We're going to make sure that our senior citizens are really there to vote. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say, you know, we have, uh, we have a big job as well to get, you know, the younger generation. I mean, the people who aren't voting out there are the people who are your, you know, maybe your children's age, your grandchildren's age, you know, who, uh, you know, I don't know who has grandchildren of what age, but, you know, I think, generally speaking, people who are younger aren't voting. Now, uh, you know, is, is this an issue that you think you can talk to, you know, younger people about as well? Yes, that will affect them, too. That will affect them because mm -hmm. they'll end up, if the senior citizen loses Medicare and Medicaid and all that stuff, they're going to end up with taking care of their parents, their grandparents. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's, it affects them too, and they're scared too. Mm -hmm. I've had some people that came to vote. I was very surprised, 22, 23 years old, and the mother was so proud. One of them were with, with his mother, and she says he's voting for the first time. So they did come out the last time. Two years ago, they did come out to vote, some of them. And I think this time they'll vote even more because they're, they're scared too. I made sure mine goes. <laughs> That's important. It's yeah. true. You know, I mean, you know, mothers have got to make sure. Oh, yeah. Young people are not even registered. She just sat talking to them. Uh -huh. Didn't you register to vote? Well, you better go, you better go register. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, my experience with the campaign was that, you know, money in politics touches every issue that anybody who cares about the outcome of legislation at the State House money in politics plays a role. And we were able to um, get a lot of students to come out and work on this campaign. And one of the issues that was real big for them was the environment. And there's lots of stories to be told about how the big money interests use their money to, to rig the rules in terms of the environment. But also, there is just the, the, the plain facts of, of politics is, um, you know, one, one specific example is Senator Willis Lord. Uh, Senator Lord won his campaign in 1994 in York County by 17 votes. Senator Lord had the paper companies come up with $5,000 in the final weeks of his campaign, and they saved him, and he won his campaign. Senator Lord is now the chair, the Senate chair of the Natural Resources Committee, and that is the committee that the paper companies go to every day on issues that affect their bottom line. And so 
What we're not saying is that they bought Senator Lawrence's vote. What we're saying is that they bought the election so that Senator Lord can be there to vote with them. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it works. And so we believe that had there been something like the Clean Elections Fund there to level the playing field so that the candidates could keep pace with each other, um, that all things, if, if money is equal, then I like to believe that the candidate who goes out and works the hardest and has the best ideas is the one that's going to win, not the one who could just run a whole bunch of negative radio ads or, or newspaper spots or whatever. So, you know, that's what this is really about. That's what this, we want to change the rules of politics of Maine. We think that this is a good start. Let, let me ask you, George, uh, about how uh, you envision this, the campaign unfolding. Right now, I mean, you guys did this wonderful job. You and 1,100 volunteers around the state did a wonderful job, you know, getting, getting <coughs> signatures to get this, you know, to the next stage. Uh, so far, I've seen some editorials that have appeared in, uh, I can't remember whether it was the Portland Press Herald or the Sunday Telegram, or yes. uh, there have been some fairly favorable editorials written about this effort, is that right? That's right. I, we have gotten um, <coughs> supportive editorials in the Bangor Daily, the Waterville Sentinel, the Kennebec Journal, the Sunday Telegram last Sunday, uh, the Lewiston mm -hmm. Journal. Uh, we really have uh, encountered no opposition at this point. But? But. That's coming, um, right? I think that what uh, okay. folks who folks who have the most to lose are the biggest players in Maine politics. If you look at campaign contribution giving, we, there was a related effort called the Money in Politics Project, which looked at the last gubernatorial election, looked at all the, everybody who gave fifty dollars or more, and figured out who they were and what I issues they represented, <coughs> and we found that forty-nine percent of the money that the four general election gubernatorial candidates raised were in amounts of a thousand dollars or more. We also found that less than 1% of people who vote in Maine give to elections, give to candidates in Maine. So it's a very small number of people writing very big checks to candidates. We also found that um, labor was outspent in the gubernatorial election 18 to 1. If you don't even count Angus King's million dollars, labor was outspent 18 to 1. So what we're talking about is wealthy individuals and big corporations. So those are the folks who have the most to lose. I believe that they will wait and see whether we qualify, first of all. Then this goes to the legislature. There will be a debate. The legislature can either vote for this, which becomes the law of land, they vote it down, which it goes out to referendum, or they can do something called a competing measure, which they put something, they put our question, but they put something else on the ballot as well. So I think during that legislative debate, we're going to start to see the hand of those who are, who are opposing us. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we get through the legislative process, then I think in the fall what you're going to see is the opposition is going to more formally organize, and I think what rather than what we do, which is to go neighborhood to neighborhood and organize, they're going to do what they usually do, which is probably buy a lot of TV time. And I think that will work against them. I think, you know, with the, with the Republican and Democratic candidates for president are going to spend a million, hundred million dollars on their campaigns. We're going to see uh, very expensive campaigns for the for the main Senate, for the U.S. Senate and Congress. That every time one of those ads runs, I think we pick up another vote for our for our proposal. People are just going to be sick of it, mm -hmm. sick of all the advertising. Well, I think that's something that you're going to probably you know experience here in the Waterville area. You're going to have you know mm -hmm. local races, you know the state house uh, races for state senate <coughs> and uh, state legislature. I don't know what kind of dollars you know, have been spent so far, but I got to believe that this time around is probably going to require more dollars than last time to get elected. And, uh, that is a problem that, that you're going to have to face. I know Vi writes those thousand dollar checks all the time, but the rest <laughs> of you uh, who, who don't write those thousand dollar checks uh, are going to have, you know, candidates running against big money. Um, now, this is, you know, if we are successful with this effort, it's going to require getting people out to vote in November. We'll have to work twice as hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know. We'll, we'll have, have to, to educate ourselves, too, on the uh, referendum to really, mm -hmm. yeah. so we can explain to people what it really is. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, some people was questioning. They were told that if you vote no, it means no, yes. And if you yeah. vote yes, it means no. I had some people that said that. And they were told that by other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we're going to have to really educate ourselves so we can give them the right answer and explain the whole thing to them. Yeah. Well, that's, I think George's point is quite right, that it's, you know, this effort is going to be carried out by you and people like you around the state, right. and without the benefit of having lots of television advertising, this is a little unusual, we're doing a, 
you know, television show, but you know, this is this is public access television. Where our audience is not quite as great as you know six, eight, thirteen would be. Um, so mostly, it's going to require people talking. You know, one Going on around one. Talking to yeah. people. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. and talking to your family members. I mean, the, yeah. what you mentioned about whether it's your son or daughter, whoever you, you know, we're making yeah. sure they yeah. vote. That's pretty important for people to do, because uh, you're gonna. I think we're gonna face a lot of probably television advertising from the the other side. I, uh, I I must say that I was on election day also helping out getting signatures at my polling place in Portland in the evening after work, and uh, you know many people signed, but but there were some people who wouldn't sign, and one of whom was uh, a rather notable political figure in his own right, who lives you know somebody who's had some experience raising big dollars and. You know, wasn't really willing to sign because this is very different from what they're used to. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people who are going to have to change their way of campaigning mm -hmm. and what they stand for if we pass this. Stand their way of believing. Thanks. Change their way of believing. You know. Mm -hmm. How do you think? Well, they have to stand. stand you know, some would believe the other way, like you said. Mm -hmm. But we, they've got to stand their way of believing the other way. We got to talk to them on that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of them, when the, the, I had just one that didn't sign. But outside of that, why don't you explain it to them? They said, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said, you mean to tell I said, do you think they're spending too much money? He said, yeah, they oh. are. I said, what if you want to run and you haven't got the money? He said, yeah, that's a good idea. Sign right on. Right. Yeah. But you, they, got, they got to be, you got to be told. explained. Mm -hmm. You got to explain to them. Let me ask George to explain quickly mm -hmm. the issue that came up a few times when I was doing this about the uh, the clean election fund and right. how that's going to be raised because people are going to campaign against this saying oh you know tax dollars you know public financing we don't right. want tax dollars to be given to these politicians yeah, uh, yeah. explain that, that you know in, when I was in Skowhegan collecting signatures every once in a while someone would stop at those words <coughs> public funding and say well wait what, are, what is this all about um, what we're going to do is we're going to we are not going to raise taxes to do this that's one thing that's very different about our proposal than in other parts of the country um, they've been, other people have been talking about a $4 per person tax. We don't believe that the taxpayers should pay to clean up this mess. We think the people who, are, who, are, who created this mess should pay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to double lobbyist fees and put that into the fund. We're going to give voters the choice. They can voluntarily check off a $3 um, box on their income tax form if they want money to clean up elections. We are going to... Um, all the fines and penalties that uh, are assessed to candidates who violate the, the, the new laws will go into the fund. Any unspent money that candidates have will go into the fund. And lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to make the legislature and the governor find the money out of their administrative budgets, the bureaucracy of running, the, of, of running government. We're going to make them find money out of those budgets and put it in the fund to clean up elections. And I think um, that you're absolutely right that people are scared and the people who are mo I think the people who are most nervous about this are candidates, especially successful ones who know how to run the, who know how to play the rules and raise the money. Um, I believe that in this new system that most candidates hate raising money and that's one of the things that they over and over they hate raising money. They don't have to raise the money. They got to work just as hard but in a different way. They are going to have a real stake in this proposal, in this way of elections. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we would raise, th those are the ways that we okay, would raise. Okay, because I think that's going to be very important. We, we are going to hear, I'm sure, oh, yeah. you know, attacks yeah. from the other side uh, saying that, you know, this will raise taxes, because that's the, any time they want to kill anything mm -hmm. around here, all they have to do is say it's going to raise mm -hmm. taxes and it runs the other way. That's why you've got to invite yeah. it to right. people. Yeah. You yeah. have to do that. One of the things, did uh, any of you guys watch uh, Governor King's State of the State address last night? Did yeah. anybody see it? No, and I yeah. it. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, you know, I don't have time really to comment a lot about it, but one of the things that he didn't, I didn't hear him say anything about was campaign finance reform. Maybe I missed it, but I don't think he mentioned this. Uh, I never heard it. Never heard that, never yes. Never heard a word about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It hasn't been a big problem for Angus. I mean, he's independently wealthy, and he was able to, you know, run. But uh, do you think maybe that we ought to try to raise this issue with the governor to get him to pay some attention to this and, you know, Make some public statements about there's too much mm -hmm. money in politics. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't hurt. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't hurt. I mean, give it a try. I think uh, you know, Governor, if you're watching, this is an issue that people want uh, you know you to pay some attention to. Yeah. Not everybody can 
afford to run for office, uh, you know, you know, has the good fortune that you've had. Yeah. I think one thing that, um, there, I think there's this mystique that a lot of people have about a wealthy individual, be it Ross Perot or Steve Forbes, um, that they can't be bought. They're running, if they're wealthy, they can't be bought. They're spending their own money. They may be foolish to be spending it on politics, but that's their choice, but they can't be bought. But what people don't realize is that quite often candidates who spend a lot of money to get elected, once they're elected, the money starts coming back to them. And the interests who want access to them will start paying. These people don't want to pay, don't want to spend their money. But sometimes that's the only way to get in. But and I think you see that with the Republican Congress. Um, the stories coming out of Congress is that they are twisting the lobbyists' arms um, more than has been seen in the, in the past to recoup their money for their mm -hmm. campaigns. And so once they get in, um, they really do have a lot of clout with the lobbyists and the big money folks. And they really do twist their arms and they get their money out of them. So it remains to be seen how the governor will choose to fund his, if he chooses to run again, mm -hmm. how he'll finance his campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it probably, uh, in, in, you know, as we're sort of nearing the close of our show, we, we need to remind, uh, first off, any, anyone who's tuned in late, that I'm sitting here in Waterville joined by a number of volunteers, uh, retired members of Local 46 of Unite, uh, who, who volunteered to help out collecting signatures to put the question on the, on the ballot to take big money out of politics. And we've been talking about their experience uh, in, in getting, the, getting people in this community to sign that petition and what we expect to happen uh, come next November when people are going to be voting on this issue. Um, I think it's a, you know, it's a pretty important issue clearly for uh, people in this room and obviously a lot of people in this community think getting big money out of politics is an important issue. Um, I just wonder, you know, Vi, in, in the last uh, couple of minutes we have, if you'd care to comment a little bit about what you think overall is going to happen here in Waterville over the course of the next year as we talk about this issue. How do you think this is going to I believe out? the people are mostly, if it's put to a vote, the people are strongly going to support it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even some of the candidates, because some of the candidates are not running anymore because they can't afford to. Some of them, they've got so much debt from their last campaigns, and it takes years to pay, so it, they really can't afford to run anymore. And mm -hmm. it's too bad because we're losing a lot of good people. Mm -hmm. So I really think the people in Waterville are really strongly supports that, and uh, mm -hmm. they'll want to see that their uh, legislatures vote for that, and if they don't, the people will take care of it themselves. Do uh, you generally feel that's the, that's the way it is up here in Waterville? Um, I believe so. Well, I yeah. think you have to start with your grassroots mm -hmm. and educate your older citizens, and if their children <coughs> see mom and dad are interested in politics, maybe that's going to say, hey, I guess it's a good thing. I should be interested mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. and that's where you're going to get your votes. Well, I hope, Stella, you're, you're right about that because there's, a, there's, sure there's a lot of people on the other side. There's a lot of big money interests on the other side who are going to want to squash this thing because even though it's a small, you know, we're in a small state right. and we're not talking with this referendum won't change the presidential election and won't change the U.S. Senate and so on in this time, I, I think this is a, you know, it's a good idea that could grow and I think that it's probably going to draw a lot of opposition from big money because they'd like to, you know, kill well, it before it has a chance to flourish. You're not going to change it overnight, but if you start little, and it will grow mm -hmm. if enough people are interested mm -hmm. and keep on being interested, mm -hmm. and it will grow. Yeah. That's the challenge. Uh, closing, just, George? I'll just make a pitch that if um, those who are watching want to find out how you can get involved, take big <coughs> money out of elections, and you want to become a grassroots volunteer in the campaign, or you just want more information our, about our proposal, Call us at Maine Voters for Clean Elections at 773-3274, and we'll be happy to get you plugged in and get you the information that you need. Okay, and we've got about, uh, you know, eight or nine or so months left to go before uh, Election Day. There's going to be a lot of work to do between now and then, and uh, to make sure that this issue doesn't get lost in all of the campaigning and all the, all the TV advertising and so on that we're going to see here in the state of Maine. But uh, I feel good about certainly the Waterville area with you guys uh, on the case. And we got to do a lot of talking. Well, <laughs> you, you, that never, you, you were never shy about that before, Evelyn. No. <laughs> Spread the news. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and uh, we're going to be talking about the same issue in communities all over the state. Uh, our show is seen by people in you know, communities, Bath, Brunswick, Portland, uh, Norway, South Paris, uh, Biddeford, Saco. So there's a lot of people around the state who are going to benefit, I think, from what 
uh, you folks have had to say today and the work that you've done. So we we'll look forward to maybe having a, we'll get together again after the election, after, we're, after this uh, referendum is successfully passed, and you can tell us how you did it. Uh, I think everybody would be very interested in that. Thanks. So, I've got to think positive. It's going to uh, That's great. Okay. Well, see, so here we are from the power of positive thinking. Uh, <laughs> I thank our viewers for tuning in to uh, another edition of Kavanaugh's Corner, our labor talk show. Thanks to my guests. Thanks to our producer and uh, uh, to the hospitality of Elm Towers in Waterville. So until next time, I'm Mike Kavanaugh, and this is Public Access Television.